How does a big software company like Slack convert over 30% free users into paying customers? The average freemium software product converts only 1-2% of customers, making this almost impossible to believe. How do they do that? A high customer conversion rate is successfully generated when you master these three components. The first is offering an invaluable free product experience that lets users do something new or something faster or more efficiently than they ever could before, for free making it easier for you to get feedback, source feature requests, and build a loyal community. And this audience includes people that would eventually pay for premium. The second component of a high converting freemium model is wisely balancing free versus paid features. This component will require significant fine tuning and is also one of the most important business decisions a software developer needs to make. To optimize sales performance, big companies generate a sense of lack that upgrading to premium will resolve. Think of how Trello limits each free workspace to 10 open boards, or how free Zoom calls are limited to 40 minutes. After people witness the free version's awesomeness, a sense of lack is the force driving the upsell. But how do you maintain robustness in the free version and at the same time make the premium version even more compelling? What experts would typically say is that paid features are those which save users time, make them money, or give them a competitive edge over their competition. But looking at big tech, there's another more fine-tuned approach to this challenge. Think of how Gmail lets you send and receive emails for free until you hit free storage capacity. The crucial component here is timing. The golden rule for nailing a successful free versus paid version balance is to make sure users run into the free plan's limitations after they've already used it to succeed. Hey Jellyman, how would you like to try out my nuclear launcher? Oh, that's awesome! So before you conclude what features to limit your paid version to, it's best to consider when in the user's journey these limitations are going to have an impact. Sales made within a strategic moment based on the user's emerging needs, are called contextual upsells. And when optimizing your customer conversion, considering the context of the upsell is mission critical. Determining exactly when to push the upgrade will depend on the product and its user. For a mass market product like Gmail, which aspires to become popular among every human on the World Wide Web, it's common to see robust solutions offered for an extended amount of time before people feel limited and need to upgrade. The smaller and more focused your audience is, the less you'll want to offer for free. And the time you'll want to wait for the upsell also becomes shorter, especially if your product is directed at professionals. If your product is helping users make money, like in the case of distribution tools like MailChimp or SEO tools like SEMrush, you can offer them a free, low-capacity version that lets them launch their business for free until they reach a capacity where they're more likely to be making money. If your solution is designed to save professionals time, like Descript does when I use it for my videos, you can offer users a limited amount of their time saved per month, and more time for Pro. Because these choices can't be made solely based on limiting users at the right time, the limitations themselves need to be perceived by them as reasonable too. More users understand that SaaS products like Gmail and Slack have storage and processing costs to support their free users. So it makes sense to them that it would be limited. In the example of most open source products, users are hosting the software themselves. So the line between free and pro is drawn based on the logic that certain features cost more to develop, maintain, and support. A giant SaaS company like Slack will limit the capacity of features, cutting off chat history for messages older than 90 days, or preventing team huddles from including more than one other person. A WordPress open source product like Elementor will limit access to free features while excluding premium features altogether. Elementor's approach is to let DIYers build a site for free but restrict advanced web design tools to paying professionals who want to increase traffic and sell products. The sensibility of blocking these features for users is that you can make money using them. So why shouldn't the open source developer make money supporting them? If users are frustrated with the limitations and continue using the product despite them, you're on the right track. But there are ways of generating the crave for your pro version while reducing the friction even further, which is what the third and final component of a high converting freemium product is all about. Designing a seamless upsell UX. This is where smaller software products can learn a lot from the tech giants. And in this case, I'd rather show than tell. I'm a free Grammarly user, and as I work on the script for this video, look how Grammarly is triggering my fear of missing out by offering corrections to seven advanced issues reserved for premium users. 
As Grammarly's interface is all about agreeing to suggestions and getting rid of these marks to end up with a clean document, I'm naturally inclined to want to get rid of all of these too. But Grammarly is hiding what the premium suggestions are. They show what parts they want me to improve, and even show which categories the improvements are in. So I could technically play a guessing game of what they are and try to fix them, but this would be a huge waste of time. Similarly, when navigating a full Google Drive in the free version of Gmail, this isn't a dead-end situation. I could technically go over my emails, download attachments to my computer's hard drive, and try to determine which emails I need and which I don't anymore, but the process would be so tedious and nerve-wracking, I'd rather just pay for the extra space. What these examples teach us about the successful monetization of freemium products is that the sales are best made when woven directly into the user experience, as a natural step in their journey. Meaning, I don't need to get a marketing email from Grammarly to explain what I get if I pay, I see exactly what I could gain right here as I use the product, and all I need to do to get there is unlock it. To identify if the three components that generate a magnetizing freemium conversion funnel are in place, ask yourself. Does the product's free version enable users to accomplish something more easily or at higher quality than they could before? Is the free product's experience designed to expose its limitations after people have already used it to succeed? Do the offered pro features resolve these limitations? Do they help users save time, make money, or become more competitive? And is the upgrade button embedded in the user interface in a way that makes it clear what users need to do with the pro version? If you're finding it difficult to answer these questions, take into account that the freemium model is not the right model for all software companies. A product with very little competition might not need to offer a free version. A free solution might be irrelevant if the product targets an audience of bigger businesses, or if the onboarding and customer support are too complex to handle with no immediate income. But for those of you looking to master freemium conversion, there's one characteristic that these products have in common. One last example of a high-performing user experience is this CTA. By offering users to learn more, Slack avoids rubbing the upsell into users' faces. Instead of forcing me straight into buying, when I click learn more, I'm offered a free trial before I have to commit to paying for it. Similar practices are applied by high-converting SaaS products like Grammarly and Spotify. The whole customer acquisition cycle is optimized for effortless interactions with low commitment until the user just can't go on without the functions offered in the paid version. And this is how big software companies get free users to pay. If you found this video useful, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to get updates on future releases. See you next time.